dear students greetings of the day welcome you all to the course that is circular knitting technology so in the last sessions we have discussed about the single weight circular knitting machines and different types of like uh, the ancillary systems which are there in the circular knitting machines such as like the lubrication systems and the suction and blowing systems and as well as the safety systems which are there in the knitting department or in the knitting machine okay and along with that we have seen that the fleecy uh, fabrics uh, or fleecy knitted fabrics uh, production how the stitch formation will be there and along with that we have seen that the terry uh, pile fabrics terry pile fabrics or loop pile fabrics uh, how the loop pile fabrics are going to be made in the uh, circular knitting machines we have discussed in the previous sessions okay so today's session we are going to see about the double bed circular knitting machines so in the last session we have discussed completely related to the single bed circular web knitting machines okay and now this session we are going to discuss about the double bed circular web knitting machines okay particularly we are going to see that as we have seen that in the classification of circular knitting machines so if you have seen that one of the criteria uh, to classify the circular knitting machines are number of beds we are using okay number of needle beds we are using so the needle beds different types are there like a single needle beds and the double needle beds okay so in double bed so or double needle bed uh, circular knitting machines so basically we have two different types one is called as the cylinder and dial case cylinder and dial case and the second one is called as double cylinder circular web knitting machines okay so one is called as cylinder and dial circular web knitting machine and the second one is called the double cylinder web knitting machine or circular knitting machine okay so we will see that what is exactly the uh, double bed circular web knitting machines are okay so you can see here the web knitted fabrics may be approximately divided into uh, uh, single or double jersey fabrics so single or double jersey fabrics according to the whether they were knitted one set of needles or two set of needles okay if we have one set of needles so we can say that that is single jersey circular knitting machine or single jersey knitting machine and if we have two needle sets sets of needles if two set of needles are there then we can say that that is called as the double jersey knitting machines okay so again it may be preferably to include some of these fabrics is separate grouping of underwear and specialty fabrics okay so these are the applications where we are using the uh, generally the uh, knitted fabrics whether it is made made from the single bed or a double bed so we are using preferably in the in the conventional days we are going to use the undergarments as well as the specialty fabrics nowadays it is came into the apparel sector also like uh, t-shirts and a few things okay so then there will be an eyelet okay pelina nail eyelet and sinker wheel mesh structures and float plated fabrics are mainly used for these are the different types of fabric structures which are used in the under garments or underwear fabrics while highest pile and the flush fabrics so pile fabrics terry piles or loop piles we have discussed in the last sessions so pile fabrics are the plush fabrics we are going to use for the purpose of specialty fabrics so specialty applications okay so specific application we are going to use like as i told earlier or or in the previous session like uh, pile fabrics or loop pile fabrics uh, which are going to be used uh, like uh, socks knitting or socks fabrics so to give the more comfort to the wearer we are giving this kind of 
fabric structures, we are making it this kind of fabric structures. Okay. And coming to the next point that is most web knitted fabrics in continuous length is knitted on large diameter and multi feeder. Multi feeder and we are using most probably latch needle machines. Okay. So latch needle machines and slit into open width. So after fabric manufacturing, so generally these uh, circular knitting machines, we are going to prepare the fabric in the form of tube. In the form of tube. So that is why tubular fabric we are talking. So after the making of the fabric, this fabric is going to slit into open width form. Okay. And it is going to be finished in the finishing area. Okay. And the emphasis is on productive, productive efficiency and quality control in the manufacturing and finishing and conversion from the conversion of fabric into article of article of apparel or other end usages. Okay. So after the finishing, what we are doing is we are going to convert this whatever the fabric which is having, which is prepared in the circular knitting machines with a very good quality. Okay, after the finishing and everything, the fabric is going to send to the making of articles or to making a garment in the garment industry or apparel industry. Okay, and this tends to encourage the uh, establishment of large units with the long production runs. So, because of the more or vast application areas, what we are doing is we are we are producing the more amount of uh, tubular fabric or knitted fabric uh, in the department. So, the, so that the large units with the long production runs we are established. Okay. So, that is why more production is necessary. And one more thing, the post knitting handling operations, the fabric must maintained in the relaxed tension free. So, in the relaxed and tension free that is nothing but a state as possible in order to reduce the in order to reduce the problems caused by the dimensional distortion and shrinkage. So this is very very important dimensional distortion and the shrinkage. Dimensional distortion and shrinkage is very these two parameters are very important in terms of uh, uh, the conversion of fabric into a garment. Okay. So generally in case of uh, circular web knitting or in the knitting machine. So the yarn is the loop forms are going to be formed. So yarn becomes a loop. So yarn is converting into a loop. So interlooping of yarn. Okay. So when the loop formation is happening, so we are pulling the knocking over the yarn so that the loop will be formed. So there may be there is a tension applied on the yarn. Okay. There will be a tension applied on the yarn due to the knocking over time. Okay. So, this whatever the strain which is already imparted or already there in the fabric structure or in the yarn to be released in the further process. So, that is why we required so many uh, finishing processes like you can see that. So, in the finishing particularly to maintain this dimensional distortion and the shrinkage we are going to heat, we are, we are going to use the heat setting and strengthening. Okay. So, by using the heat setting and strengthening, we are going to stable the fabric. That is dimensionally, we are stabling the fabric by heat setting as well as the strengthening. Okay. So, this is the major thing in the process of finishing. And apart from that, the fabric is going to be sent to the, for the printing and uh, bleaching and dyeing, if the piece dyed is there, nothing but if the long fabric or this mono color we are need to apply, in that case we are going to send the fabric, the gray fabric into the dyeing. So before dyeing we, we can uh, uh, scour the fabric, mercerize the fabric or bleach the fabric. So whatever the process is required for particular application we are going to follow them. Okay. So these are the chemical processing. Uh, areas where we are final output that is final fabric finished fabric is going to be ready for the apparel production apparel making so garment making that is nothing but 
So as I told, like undergarments, t-shirts, apparels, particularly, so the leggings. So there are uh, so many applications are there of this knitted fabric. So these are going to be ready after the chemical processing. After the chemical processing. Okay. Then you can see here. So before going to the content of uh, double jersey or double uh, double bed uh, circular knitting machines, uh, we'll see what is the comparison in between the single bed circular knitting machines and double bed circular knitting machines. Okay. So you can see here the single jersey fabric and we are seeing that the double jersey fabrics the two fabrics we are comparing so you can observe here the number of needles which are used in a single jersey so normally single jersey fabric is formed by one set of one set of needles and you can see that the double jersey is going to be formed by two set of needles okay so the single jersey is going to be formed by using one set of needles and double jersey fabrics are going to be formed by using the two sets of needles. Okay, so we will discuss one by one. Okay, and what is the appearance of the fabric after making? So you can see that the single jersey fabric face side and back side appears different. Face side and back side of the fabric is going to be appear different. That is why as I told as we have discussed also, so we have a technical phase, we have a technical phase that is all the phase loops will be appear at one side and we have a technical back, we have a technical back. So nothing but one side of the fabric which appears only face loops and one other side only back loops are going to be appeared. So as, as we have discussed earlier also like what is this face loop and what is uh, the back loop you can observe that the face loops nothing but the loop which is going to appear face side. So this is the loop and you can see that the previous pores of the loop is going to appear at back side. Okay. So the previous loop is going to appear on the back side and the new loop that is the newly formed loop is going to be appeared at the face side. You can observe this. This is the face loop. And as we uh, we know that the back loop nothing but the loop which is appeared on the back side. So the previous loop is going to appear on the face. Okay. So these if all the loops are looks like this, this is called as the technical phase. And if the all loops are appeared back loops, that is called as the technical back. So this is the difference. Now we'll move on to the double jersey fabric. So face and back sides, face sides and back sides appear same, same. But but it is it is only in some cases because if we have sequential ribs, that is equal ribs, one into one rib, comma two into two rib. Okay. 2 into 2 rib. So rib structures it will be appear same. And if we have a interlock that is completely uh, interlock gating. So in that case the fabric will appear same in the both the sides. For example when it is going to be different the face side and back side. So this will be different if the rib structure or if for example I am giving the rib structure so if the rib structure which is having 2 into 1 rib so unequal ribs so 
one loop will be appear at back side and the two loops will be appear, two waves will be appear in the face side. And one more thing like uh, 3 into 1, 3 into 2. So these ribs are differently appear. Okay. So the appearance of the fabric will be different in these cases and these cases the appearance of the fabric or is going to be looks uh, same. So that is the major thing. Now coming to the third point that is curling tendency. So sometimes you can observe that if the knitted fabric you have cut, so there will be a chances of curling at the edges of the fabric. So what is the tendency of the curling? So single lens is generally it is having curling tendency, curling tendency. So how it is having is, so it have a curling tendency, so in particular to the top side, top and bottom sides, bottom sides, top and bottom sides of the fabric, of the fabric becomes a curl, becomes curl. So if you have cut the fabric, so top side and back bottom side which is going to curl to back side to back side nothing but the fabric which is going to cut top and bottom and if you observe that so you have to see that the wheels direction wheels direction and courses direction so which is having a tendency I am drawing the uh, fabric structure you can see here the fabric structure say so this is our single layer knitted fabric so top side and bottom side bottom side and top side which is going to curl to backward direction ok to backward direction and sides sides these sides and this side which is going to curl into the face direction into the face direction this is going to curl in the face and curl into back and it is curl back so this is how the knitted fabric is going to having a curling tendency and you can observe that there is no curling tendency which is going to observe in case of a double lc fabric generally because there is an equal uniform distribution of the loops are there so the strain also uniformly distributed so there is no chances of curling generally which is going to be there in case of a double lc fabrics and the fabric balance if you see that the single jersey fabrics are mostly unbalanced and double jersey fabrics are balanced structures and the thickness and weight of the fabric thickness and weight of the single jersey is half of the rib fabric and the thickness and weight of the double jersey is twice of the rib fabric and sometimes you can say that the twice of the single jersey fabrics okay if it is interlock if it is interlock then if you have used if you have used all the parameters same in that case you can say that the interlock will be doubled than the single jersey fabrics because the cylinder needles cylinder needles as well as dial needles are going to form the loops so because of that so your loops loops number of loops that is stitch density becomes double than the single jersey fabric that is why it is going to be uniform and balanced structure and uh, the fabric weight and thickness becomes uh, twice uh, compared to the single jersey fabric structure and the laddering problems also you can see that the single jersey fabrics are having a laddering problem and there is no laddering effect which is produced in the double jersey fabrics ok and expensive terms uh, if cost uh, is concerned so normally single jersey is less expensive than the double jersey because the 
components or elements which are there or available in the circular knitting machine is simply only one set of elements are required and here more expensive than the single jersey because the knitting elements which are there in the case of uh, double jersey are doubled or twice because of that the uh, expensive it is compared to the single jersey it is simply double okay and the look if you consider the look of the uh, look of the fabric if you consider the look of the fabric all are face otherwise all are back so you can observe that all are face or the back well, back uh, loops will be appear so depends upon the design here in the case of double jersey depends upon the design the fabric appearance is going to different for example as i told one into one rib okay one into two rib two into uh, one rib two into two rib okay and three into one rib so there are rib there are so many derivatives of rib so it is going to appear differently if the structure of the fabric is same and as well as we have different uh, uh, fabric structures also okay so if we change the fabric structures like a pq or double pq or half cardigan cardigan so if we change the view or if we change the generally the structure we cannot say the view so we can say that the structure of the knitted fabric so completely the look or appearance of the fabric is going to be different okay so this is the simple comparison or difference between the single jersey and double jersey fabrics okay so we'll move on to the double bed circular knitting machines now okay double bed circular knitting machines so the most wide spread version of the double bed circular knitting machines is equipped equipped with two needle beds equipped with two needle beds positioned at 90 degrees angle positioned at 90 degrees angle and the vertical needles in the bed is called as the cylinder and while the horizontal one is called as the die so a simple one so the needles which are there in the cylinder that is vertical needles are present in the cylinder say for example i can we can see here so there is a cylinder and in the cylinder we have needles we have a needle so there is a butt outside to the projected so these are called as the cylinder so the needles are going to be uh, vertical these needles are called as the cylinder needles and if the if we have uh, the needles which are present in the trites and which is projected outside from the dial so we can say that this is called as the dial so the needle arrangement will be like one is this and the second one is like this so so which are the needles which are arranged in the 90 degrees angle and you can see that these vertical needles are called as the cylinder needles the horizontal needles are called as dial needles so this is the explanation related to this and you can see that now the another version is there so that is one version that is a cylinder and dial case and there is an another version there is a double bed cylinder uh, circular knitting machines featured needle beds which are positioned 180 degrees which are positioned 180 degrees so 90 degrees nothing but like this 180 nothing but like this okay so now these two needle beds so you can see that these machines are called double cylinder machines or we can say that uh, link to link uh, machines link to link uh, machines and you can see here the they incorporate two needle beds called lower and upper cylinder needles so lower and upper cylinder there are two cylinder there are simply there are two cylinders which are arranged which are fixed into a particular angle that is 180 degrees angle okay so nothing but face to face each other so you can see here 
so the alignment two cylinders aligned to one another so these these machines featured special double uh, latch needles so this type of uh, uh, double cylinder knitting machines are required a special latch needles which are having double latches which are having double latches generally in one in in the needle in the needle we have only one latch so say for example this is the needle and we have a latch okay now in this particular case double cylinder case we required we required double latch double latch needles double latch needles nothing but there is a needle which is having both the sides hook which is having both the sides hook and which is having both the sides latch okay the movement of these latches may be if it, if the cylinders are fixed into the circular form say for example one is uh, like this and the second one also be like this so now the trikes of the cylinder trikes of the lower cylinder so the needle is going to move into the particular path so it will be move up and down it will be move up and down okay so one time it is going to form the this loop this side it is forming the loops and the second time it is going to form this side on the loops so we will discuss what is exactly this uh, loop formation in the double cylinder knitting machines ok and so these are the simple classification of uh, two cylinder uh, nothing but two needle bed or double needle bed circular web knitting machines ok so as I am repeating that the double bed circular knitting machines are classified into two types one is called as cylinder and dial case which are arranged into a 90 degree angle and there is a second one that is double cylinder case double cylinder case so which are aligned into a 180 degrees of angle so this is related to the double jersey circular knitting machines we will discuss more in the next sessions till then thanks for listening bye